Marie Antoinette's wedding dress didn't fit. The 14-year-old bride wore an enormous white and silver dress decorated with white diamonds. The dress was too small, miscalculating her measurements. The dressmakers had constructed the gown so that it did not fit. No matter how tightly they tried to cinch the body of the dress, it didn't properly cover the lacing and shift poking out from the back, which meant there was a strange gap between the rows of diamonds. Both Princess Diana and Prince Charles wanted to back out. Diana Spencer faced major jitters on July 29, 1981 and nearly called off her wedding just days before the ceremony. I can't marry him, I can't do this. This is absolutely unbelievable, she told her sister. Diana suspected that Charles was still secretly seeing his mistress, Camilla Parker Bowles and she was right. To make matters worse, she spilled some of her perfume on her wedding dress and it left a noticeable stain. Her makeup artist suggested she hold the stained spot as she walked, making it look like she was simply holding up her dress. Diana wasn't the only one with doubts. In 1994, Charles revealed in a candid authorised biography that he was forced into the wedding by his domineering father, Prince Philip. After agreeing to go through with the marriage, Diana still mixed up the prince's name, calling him Philip at the altar instead of Charles. King Edward II kissed his male lover instead of his bride. In 1308, King Edward II of England married a young French princess named Isabella. At the time, Isabella was only 12 years old and she likely wasn't happy when her new husband kissed someone else at the wedding. And even more shocking, the king kissed another man instead of his bride. Edward had a reputation for same-sex affairs and he didn't try to hide his relationship with a knight named Pierce Gaveston, the man he kissed at his wedding. But Isabella got her revenge eventually. She deposed Edward and seized the throne for herself. King George IV was drunk and crying at the altar. In 1795, George, Prince of Wales, the future King George IV, married his cousin, Princess Caroline of Brunswick. It wasn't a union of love, much like many royal marriages in this period. George needed help paying off his debts and Caroline had money. When George saw his bride for the first time, he exclaimed, I am not well, get me a glass of brandy. And it went downhill from there. On their wedding day, George was drunk and needed help to stand up. He even wept openly during the ceremony. He regarded Caroline as unattractive and unhygienic and said he suspected that she was not pure. The prince claimed that the couple had only been intimate three times, twice the first night of the marriage and once the second night. Caroline claimed George was so drunk that he passed the greatest part of our bridal night under the grate where he fell and where I left him. On the 7th of January, 1796, one day short of nine months of the wedding, Caroline gave birth to Princess Charlotte, George's only legitimate child. King Arthur Canute dropped dead at a royal wedding in Lambeth. He was the ruler of Denmark and England and became the most memorable guest at a wedding in 1042. The king abruptly dropped dead in the middle of a toast. One witness said, 
As he stood drinking, he fell suddenly to the earth with a tremendous struggle. He was the last Scandinavian ruler of England, replaced by Edward the Conqueror. Alfred the Great dealt with intestinal trouble. Alfred the Great, King of Wessex, was 19 when he married in 868, and he was already afflicted with hemorrhoids. The night before his wedding, Alfred prayed for God to replace his hemorrhoids with a less painful disease. Instead, he woke up with a much worse problem, a flare-up of intestinal issue, which made the hemorrhoids look mild. At the discovery, Alfred supposedly burst out, if only I'd stuck with the hemorrhoids. King Henry IV of France's wedding turned into a massacre. On August 18th, 1572, a royal princess married the King of Navarre. The royal wedding went horribly wrong when it led to one of the worst massacres in the history of France. The wedding occurred during the French Wars of Religion and it instantly divided Paris because the bride and groom practiced different faiths Margaret of France, daughter of Queen Catherine de' Medici, was raised Catholic. Her groom, King Henry of Navarre, was a Protestant. The Royal Catholics saw the wedding as an opportunity since many wealthy Protestants came to Paris for the event. Just days after the two wed in a public ceremony, Catholics sent by the Queen rose up and slaughtered at least 3,000 Protestants in what became known as the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. The horrific wedding present didn't end the union and two decades later the groom became King Henry IV of France. King James VI's honeymoon was spent conducting witch trials. In 1589, King James VI of Scotland sailed across the sea to meet his future bride, Anne of Denmark. But on the way back, storms nearly threatened to sink the ship. James became obsessed with the idea that witches were trying to kill him, and he began a witch hunt as soon as he returned to Scotland. Under torture, a woman named Galus Duncan blamed other women for bewitching the king and his bride. James's witch persecution spiralled into the North Berwick witch trials, where the king personally tortured accused witches to force confessions. King Philip IV's wedding resulted in offspring who could barely function. King James IV of Spain should have known better when he married his own nieces. The Spanish Habsburg line was already dangerously inbred, to the point that hereditary deformities were killing off huge numbers of children in the family. But that didn't stop him marrying two of his nieces. He married Elizabeth of France in 1615 with whom he had eight children, only two lived to adulthood. He married Mariana of Austria in 1649, and they had five children together, including the tragic King Charles II, who could barely function due to genetic abnormalities. Genetic tests show that the Habsburg gene pool was so familial that Charles was almost as inbred as a child produced by a brother impregnating his own sister. All of King Henry VIII's weddings were catastrophic. Pretty much every one of King Henry VIII of England's marriages ended in disaster. His first wedding to his dead brother's widow ended with Henry breaking a thousand years alliance with the Catholic Church and triggering the English Reformation. His second wedding to a pregnant Anne Boleyn 
ended badly. When she couldn't bear him as son, she was convicted of treason and beheaded. His third bride, Jane Seymour, died just nine days after giving birth. Henry's fourth bride, Anne of Cleves, he found her repulsive and divorced her only six months after the wedding. The fifth bride wasn't so lucky, Catherine Howard, who was Anne Boleyn's cousin. She was also beheaded for allegedly cheating on the king. Henry's sixth wife, Catherine Parr, managed to outlive her royal husband. King Edward VIII abdicated the throne for his American bride. In 1936, King Edward ruled over the powerful British Empire, but he gave it all up and abdicated his throne to marry an American named Wallace Simpson. The scandal created a crisis in the British monarchy because she was divorced. When Edward stepped away from his royal position, he declared, I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king. Simpson's divorce became final the month before she married Edward. Even though Edward gave up the throne for marriage, he didn't completely lose his title. The pair were known as the Duke and Duchess of Windsor and they remained married until Edward's death in 1972. Roman Emperor Maximilian I arranged marriages between his heirs and unborn children. The Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I arranged a double marriage between his heirs, the King of Hungary and Bohemia. The alliance created intense bonds between the two royal families, but it came at a high price. In the first wedding, Maximilian's grandson Ferdinand, who was three at the time, was promised to marry the King of Hungary and Bohemia's daughter, Anne, also three. In the second wedding, Maximilian's granddaughter, Mary, who was still a baby, would marry the fetus of the King of Hungary and Bohemia's wife's belly. The arranged marriages were held in 1515. Princess Augusta of Saxagotha vomited on her future mother-in-law. Princess Augusta was nervous on her wedding day. In 1736, she had just left Germany to travel to Britain. She crossed the channel to marry the heir to the United Kingdom, Prince Frederick. At the time, Augusta was only 16 and her groom was 29. They had only met once before and the teenage bride didn't speak English. Her nerves only grew stronger on the wedding day. She vomited all over her dress and even worse, she threw up down the bodice of her mother-in-law, Queen Caroline. Queen Elizabeth's tiara broke. On November 20th, 1947. Princess Elizabeth planned to wear the famous fringe tiara at her wedding, the elaborate tiara made of diamonds, gold and silver. But on the morning of her wedding, disaster struck. According to the royal jeweler, the fringe was given to Queen Elizabeth on her wedding day and her hairdresser broke it. Thinking quickly, the tiara was sent to the house of Garrod, the same designer who originally made the tiara, with a police escort. The tiara was fixed that morning and sent back to the Queen 10 minutes before she walked down the aisle. You don't expect the royals to have those sorts of mix-ups, do you? And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.